Hey guys and welcome to Daily Dev channel. Today is a short video about installing Swagger UI to Django REST framework. For people who doesn't know what Swagger is, it is a famous UI that allows your clients to browse and view your APIs and also provide an ability for them to try the APIs before they implement or integrate their systems into your APIs. So it's pretty convenient and it's also minimize the amount of time that you will spend helping your clients to interact with your API. So it's really simple. So just let's get started. The first thing you want to do, just going to open the code in um, VS code. I have Django installed as prerequisite. You must have Django framework installed. If you have been following my videos to install Django with Docker, you should be able just to use that example where um, we will just add one package to your requirements.txt which is Django REST Swagger. That's the package name. If you're using Docker, just put it in the requirements.txt as I will do right now. I put it in the requirements.txt and the next thing is going to be uh, that I should build the image. But the first thing I need to cd to that folder and I will just have to rebuild the image docker compose app dash dash build dash d this is a short command to building the container and spin it up again now if you're not using docker you simply just need to do pip install django dash rest dash swagger and that should do it for you while this is uh, running as we could see that the image was built successfully and um, tagged with whatever so whatever docker compose is doing uh, the next thing we want to do is going to the code and we will have to edit two files the first one is the settings and i will just add it right after rest framework we will add um, an application called rest framework swagger don't forget the comma and the next thing is going to be to go to the URLs, the main URLs file under your main app and import from REST framework swagger package or app that we have just imported. Grab views and import get swagger view. And in here we will define a variable called schema view for the swagger UI and we will just use the get swagger view function and we will give it a title and that's going to be your um, project title I'm just going to call it my project swagger and that's it let's save oh uh, one more thing we'll just have to add another path and it's going to be to the root level and we will just refer to the schema underscore view and that should do it for us now after rebuild we just need to try it out okay we'll go to localhost 8080 and here you go we see swagger and my project swagger and here we could uh, actually try the previous apis we have built you could check my previous videos if you are curious about how to build these APIs. So we'll just try get all the items in the to-do list right here. And if we want to update a specific one, we could just try to update that um, by adding the ID here, passing the ID. And then we should be able to pass a payload right here. But I will show you in a second how you could um, send a payload within a request in Swagger. And here how you could delete one of the items. Let's go delete just one. We have ID4 for item my first item. We will delete that one here. As you can see, 204. So that was deleted just fine. Let's execute. It's gone. So it's that easy. One thing we want to add is how we could populate a box that you could pass payload for your request by going to your API view 
here in my example we have the to-do list application and we'll go to the views and here we will import core API and from there we will build another class that will have the documentation about your APIs so we will just create a class to do list view schema and we will just import the auto schema and we'll do pass here we will need to import the auto schema from rest framework dot schemas import auto schema that's what we are using here now let's continue defining the class so we will override a function in the auto schema called get manual fields and the first argument is self and then path then method that's what the function expects and we will define a list called extra fields and we will build logic that will check the request method if it is and we will just make it lower case to make sure that we don't care about the case sensitivity here and we will just say in post or put because those are the two type of HTTP requests that allows the clients to send payload with the request and then we will say extra fields equal core API dot field description and that's actually the field that we need the client to pass because we have it defined as a column in the DB that's why we want the client to send it so in case of update or posting a new item we want the description to be passed in the payload okay so at this point we could just go back one indentation and say manual fields super get manual fields and pass the path and the method we will just return manual fields plus extra fields so what we did here first the manual fields we are defining a variable that we assigned to it the get method fields function that we got from the parent of this class and adding to it the extra fields list that we have just defined the next thing we want to do go to the class where there is a post and just say schema equal to do list view schema we'll copy this to the next class because here we have the put method let's go refresh swagger we seem to have an error let's debug what's going on we will just say docker compose logs my django oh there is a syntax error i made here oh that's obvious we cannot just do in and um, equality it's either one and in this example we want in because we are validating this exists inside this list okay so let's run it now let's check if there's another error okay everything seems to be working we'll refresh again the server just took a bit time to um, spin up alrighty we could see that here we could pass the ID and also description so let's pick one of the items here and edit it so we have ID number six and my third item will go say editing the third item there you go the request was successful and here is the response buddy let's go back and get the request again editing the third item so it did work successfully let's try to create a new item my new item 
we'll post that as you can see 201 uh, the new item was created if we go request all items the new item was added so that's how you use swagger the last thing I wanted to mention out is the session login which is very useful we need to make sure that we allow clients to be able to log in to try out our APIs without having to use any HTTP clients or even using any JavaScript libraries to do an HTTP request and deal with the authentication. So we will add one more thing and that's the last things to the URLs. Here we will click on the session login and the missing URL is the account. Here we will just add another path and that should go to accounts and we will include rest framework here dot urls and that's all what we need to do to allow clients to log in via Django rest framework okay so if I log in as my root account there you go I was able to log in so that's how you use swagger so to this point this is the end of um, this video we have gone through how to install uh, swagger into our Django project and also we have um, demonstrate how to use the APIs in swagger and how to add the documentation to uh, the post and the put HTTP type request where you need to pass a payload so I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you like my videos give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel to get uh, my latest videos and we'll see you in the next videos thank you for watching and happy learning